Firstly, I want to say sorry. And I'm sorry for the things we simply didn't get right, and also sorry for the way that this matter has been handled. And it's no use saying that this or that was within the rules, and it's no use saying that people were working hard. This pandemic was hard for everyone. We asked people across this country to make the most extraordinary sacrifices, not to meet loved ones, not to visit relatives before they died. And I understand the anger that people feel. But, Mr Speaker, it isn't enough to say sorry. This is a moment when we must look at ourselves in the mirror and we must learn. And while the Metropolitan Police must yet complete their investigation, and that means there are no details of specific events in Sue Gray's report, I, of course, accept Sue Gray's general findings in full. And above all, her recommendation that we must learn from these events and act now. With respect to the events under police investigation, she says, and I quote, no conclusions should be drawn or inferences made from this other than it is now for the police to consider the relevant material in relation to those incidents. But more broadly, she finds that there is significant learning to be drawn from these events, which must be addressed immediately across government. This does not need to wait for the police investigations to be concluded. That is why we are making changes now to the way Downing Street and the Cabinet Office run, so that we can get on with the job that I was elected to do, Mr Speaker, and the job that this Government was elected to do. First, it is time to sort out what Sue Gray rightly calls the fragmented and complicated leadership structures of Downing Street, which she says have not evolved sufficiently to meet the demands of the expansion of Number 10. And we will do that including by creating an office of the Prime Minister with a permanent secretary to lead number 10. Second, Mr Speaker, it is clear from Sue Gray's report that it is time not just to review the Civil Service and Special Advisor Codes of Conduct wherever necessary to ensure that they take account of Sue Gray's recommendations, but also to make sure that those codes are properly enforced. And third, I will be saying more in the coming days about the steps we will take to improve the Number 10 operation and the work of the Cabinet Office, to strengthen Cabinet Government and to improve the vital connection between Number 10 and Parliament. Mr Speaker, I get it and I will fix it. And I want to say... And I want to say to the people of this country, I know what the issue is. Yes, Mr Speaker, yes, yes. It's whether this government can be trusted to deliver. And I say, Mr Speaker, yes, we can be trusted 